You have what it takes. You are ready. The universe is handing it over to you on a silver platter. <laughs> so all evidence points to that this is this is what you were made to do. Even someone who knows you the most, your spouse, saying, yeah, this is something I, that I see you doing. Even you said people at work, right, have also said the same thing? Yeah. Obviously with a capital O. <laughs> This is what you were meant to do. And now I'm sweating. (laughs) This is Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode number 308. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host. The girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am so glad you're here and I am pumped for today's episode, partly because it's a coaching episode and I love getting on the phone with people and helping them and I love bringing them to you. I have no doubt that so many of you are going to relate to Tracy's topic that she brings to the call. I can't wait for you to hear it. Before I do that, before I get so excited and start yammering on about it, a heads up that I am doing something I haven't done in a long time, and that is I'm having a Black Friday sale. And it's going to be super easy. You don't even need to leave your house. I don't even really know a whole lot of people anymore that do leave their house to go shopping. And I am offering up something that is actually not even available on my site anymore. It is just, I've decided to just have it as a bonus for people that come on board for my private VIP coaching, and that is a five-figure investment. So if you aren't in a place or not ready to spend that much money to get this particular program, then guess what? It's going to be available on Friday, November 29th the 30th and December 1st. So those three days, Black Friday and that whole weekend, and it's my inner critic program. The whole name of it is Kick Your Gremlin's Ass, and it's very tongue-in-cheek. No, it is not about putting a stranglehold on your inner critic. It really is about learning all the tools for managing your negative self-talk. So if you struggle with comparison, telling yourself that you're not enough – even perfectionism, imposter complex, all of those things. If you have resonated with me talking about the inner critic in both of my books, then this is it on a silver platter. It's everything I know to help you learn to manage your negative self-talk. It used to be for sale on my site for $297. It's going to be $197 for three days only. And When the sale's over, no, it's not going to remain on my site and just be more expensive. It's going away, and it's going to go back to just being a bonus for my private VIP clients. So if you want to get your hands on that, then you need to be either – if you need to put it in your calendar, (laughs) you could be that prepared. Or if you are on – if you're a subscriber for my emails – If you get the Wednesday emails about this podcast, if you get my fantastic emails that we send out that are fun and motivating, then you will get the emails for that. If you don't get my emails, super easy to sign up. You can text the word KICKASS to 444-999. You're also going to get a link that's to a free ebook that's a very, very condensed version of strategies for your inner critic. That's not it. Try not to get confused. I'm sorry if it's a little confusing, but it's just a it's a freebie that I send out for people that become subscribers. So you're welcome ahead of time. And have a look out for that. In the meantime, oh, this is such a good episode. Partly because Tracy is actually someone who I have coached before. And she's been a longtime client of mine and been in at least, at least one of my group programs, I know that. So partly because she holds a special place in my heart. We do go go way back. And I got all fired up in this particular coaching session with her because, well, you'll find out. I don't want to give too much away. And another exciting thing is that in the update, 
where, you know, I let a couple weeks go by, let Tracy do her homework, and we use a messaging app called Voxer. I know a lot of you also use it. And the message that she sent me back was so clear about what she's done and what's ahead. I'm like, can I just use this and play it on the episode? So that's what you're going to hear at the end of the episode about what happened. So stay tuned for that. And without further ado, here is my conversation with Tracy. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. I am so glad to have you on. As I told everyone in the intro, you and I know each other and have known each other for quite some time now, a handful of years. Yeah. And I was really excited to see your application come through on Patreon to come and be vulnerable and honest on the show. And your topic is something that I know a lot of people relate to. And I'm going to have you talk about it in a minute. But first, give us a little, like, let us into Tracy's world. Who are you? What do you do? (laughs) Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I live in Western New York, Um, lived here kind of my whole life. Um, And I have two daughters, 16 and 12. And so I saw a meme on social media that something alluding to, um, if you think you're tired when you have toddlers. Wait till you have teenagers. And that's <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> that's your life right now? Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I have a lovely hubby. Uh, we've been married for about five years. And um, yeah. And when I'm not busy with all of that and acting like an Uber right now, that's pretty much what I do. Um, <laughs> so I work and I work for a consulting firm. I've been in the banking industry for, oh gosh, probably 25 years and done all sorts of different things. Okay. Yeah. So you're in the corporate world. I the am. The nine to five world. Okay. And we were just chatting before we started recording and I was like, okay, we need to jump in because okay. I want you to tell everyone what you're struggling with and what you want some coaching on. But you said something interesting, like when you went back to read your application, which you filled this out about, let's see, it's been over, well, gosh, it's been like six weeks. Mm -hmm. So you said, oh, wow, I was really on fire that day. (laughs) And I was like, because when I read this, I didn't feel like it was extra, like, you know, flipping tables or anything. So so talk to us about, I want to know two things. Tell us what you're struggling with and are you feeling differently than when you first filled this out or like what's going on with that? I did fill this out a a few weeks ago and then um, I'm like, oh gosh, I got to go back and refresh my memory here. So the first sentence that I wrote was, I'm struggling what to do about my job every day, all day. I'm very close to doing what I'm passionate about, but I'm stuck right now. And so and then I just, I I was very, I think I was in a mood that day or maybe I yeah. had a bad day, which I think, you know, I think happens to a lot of people because when you have a great day at work, you're like, oh, this is great. That's and you so never bad. feel like leaving mm-hmm. and blah, blah. then you have a bad day. Um, but, you know, to be honest, I, I mean, this is how I've been feeling for a while. And um, I see the word handcuffed and I really do feel like I'm a little bit handcuffed, you know, because I've been in the corporate world a long time, as you said. And so there's a lot of perks that come with that, um, as salary, benefits, all that stuff. But then you are adhering to, you know, the corporate culture you work for, you're doing what is asked of you. And I guess I'm feeling like I'm, I'm not aligned with what I want to be doing versus what I am doing. And I've been thinking a lot about that the past few years. And so I guess I'm at kind of a turning point right now. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned you have a milestone coming up in 2020. Yes. (laughs) Do you want to reveal what that is? Yeah, I know, right? Um, Yeah. And so I don't know. I don't know if other people, like when you have a milestone birthday, you like reevaluate your life and you take stock and what you're grateful for and where you thought you'd be. And so when I think about where I thought I would be when I'm turning 50, you know, I struggle with a couple things. And and I guess I'm at the stage where, you know, I have been working in the corporate world for almost 30 years. I mean, right out of school, right out of college. And so I, I guess I'm looking at that as a, okay, I've done this and now I want to take what I've learned doing that and and 
take it into a different direction. And Mm -hmm. maybe the fact I'm turning 50 is really on my mind. It's making me reassess what I'm doing because I ultimately do. I I recently said to somebody, I'm, I'm kind of in the final, you know, on the back end of my career, if you think about it, um, you know, retirement's not that far off. And so I want to, I want to spend that time, um, enjoying what I do. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is a conversation, as I told people in the intro, intro, you and I have, have worked together before, and this is not a brand new conversation. I'm not surprised to hear all of this. <laughs> and I know that you are, I mean, if you don't mind, I'll just reveal you're passionate about writing and empowering women. And why don't you finish this, this sentence for me? What else? Um, yeah, I'm very passionate about that. And part of what I do as my job, um, because I'm a trainer and part of what I do is I do leadership development training. And when I'm doing that, I absolutely love it. And people have commented on how different they see me when I'm in that mode. And so if I were to, you know, think about what my perfect situation would be, it would be empowering um, women and and writing and then facilitating. And so I'm doing a tiny bit of that, but I'm not doing a lot of that. I have other responsibilities with my current role that you know really don't get me fired up. So it's a matter of thinking about, well, what portion of that do I want to be doing? Do I want maybe just to shift a little bit? Or do I want to make a huge change? And that's kind of where I'm at because I would love to do all those things you just said. I have so many <laughs> questions. <laughs> I have so many questions for you. And I think before I get too excited and, and like sort of like tear off down the hallway with you <laughs> is you said something also that was really important in your application about one of your top values, or maybe it is your top value. So tell people what that is. As a result of some of the work I've done with you in the past, um, I think freedom um, is ranking at the very top of one of my values right now. Um, And then I wrote here, you know, freedom to work doing what I love, freedom to choose when and where I do that. Um, And I feel like I'm craving it right now because Mm -hmm. I feel like it's lacking for me. And again, that's what happens when, um, you know, you're on a salary for a corporation, you, you are at the mercy of meeting those expectations. And so at least that's, you know, my situation or how I'm feeling right now. And so my, the, my value of freedom, I feel like, is not there for me right now. Okay. And just as a side note to gather all of the information, your husband said he's supportive of whatever it is that you want to do on the condition that what? <laughs> yeah. So I I did talk to, so, you know, you stick with me, you know, we, even when we are not working directly together, you are in the back of my head sometimes because, you know, I did have to tell him about this. Like, you know, so we've had some really good conversations like, okay, let's get your spouse involved. And he is very, very supportive. He actually, one of the first things he said was, I can't picture you doing anything other than that. You would be ideal for this. However, he doesn't quite understand everything that's involved with it. Um, If I were to make a big change and I think he's on board as long as my income doesn't change. Okay. (laughs) So he's asking you because you have that option, right? It's always the option to quit your job, start this new business, this new endeavor. And I mean, I don't know, have you had dreams of doing that some days when you really feel handcuffed? I, I'm at the point right now where I think about it every single day. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And then, um, I should, I should probably throw in the other little piece that I struggle with too. So I did talk to my husband about it. He is very supportive. We were just talking about it the other day, as a matter of fact. Um, and then, you know, when we're talking about timing, yes, you know, I'm turning 50. I feel like that's a big time for me. But then I also, I have my oldest daughter who's going to be going to college in 18 months. And I just feel like actually what I wrote was I feel selfish for wanting 
t- this for myself when I have a child going off to college soon and I really shouldn't be starting my own business while I'm thinking about paying for college. Right. Okay. <laughs> and just for the record, I don't I don't recommend that people do that. I mean, I know some people have I don't I don't know. <laughs> and I'm I'm attracted to risk. My husband's very risk averse. I am not. And even I, who someone who who will take a risk, would not totally quit a full-time job to be able to jump into something unless I had absolutely 100% no other options. And I'm always very transparent to people too when they ask like, how did you start and build the business? Hey, if I didn't have my husband's salary at the time, it would have looked different. I don't. I would have had to move in with my parents or do something else like had another job while I created the side hustle. So all that to say, that's not what I'm recommending Tracy do or anyone listening. And I know that there's, you know, single moms out there who are trying to build something similar with you and they're cleaning houses on the side and things like that. So there are solutions, I think, to this. But before we go in that direction, I when you were when you had filled out that application and, and you had typed in, hold on, I'm gonna pick it up here. Exactly what you just said about it being selfish to do something like that. And when you have, you know, this big expense coming with your daughter starting college soon, what struck me in that moment, and I don't know, I probably have thought about this before, but it kind of smacked me in the face is this whole concept and just the word selfish. What if selfish was okay? Like, you know what, Tracy, at the end of the day, it is a little selfish, and I'm kind of like, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> why have we created that to be so bad, especially for mothers? Because I think this would be a different conversation if this was your husband. I would agree with that statement. You're right. So what if – my point is like, what if you could have both? What if you could uh, – like, let's let's put it all on the dining room table. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner where you have m- many options and all of them are Right. Like the yams aren't wrong just because they're yams. <laughs> you can have selfish, also selfless, also being a role model to your daughters, giving back to your community, giving back to your own life, answering the call of your soul. Because when you tell me that you think about this every day, like the hair stands up on the back of my neck. I don't want you to go another day without at least taking a step in the direction. And we can, well, we're going to get into that in a minute, but I want you just to hear what I'm saying because I know that if this continues and you turn 50 and then 51 and 52, and then I talk to you again in two years and you haven't done anything, that is like death by a thousand paper cuts. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right. When you mentioned about um depends on everybody's situation, like if you're a single parent or what your options are. And I was actually thinking about this in my early 40s, but my situation was really different in my early 40s. Like I, my kids were really little. I was a single mom. I had just gotten divorced and I had actually gotten laid off from my job then. And I was, I wanted to do this back then, but I really, really was, you know, strapped back then. So if I compare that to now, um, if I were to flush it out, <clears throat> maybe I do have some more options now because my situation is is different. And you're so right. Wow. Like I have tears in my eyes right now because the thought of you know going through my fifties and you know like that old saying. There's a million little sayings and memes about it about what regret can do to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that can really eat away at somebody's soul. And I feel like that's going to be me if. I start my 50s and then looking at retirement and I'm still, you know, doing whatever, but it's not what I am passionate about doing. Yeah. And you have a you have a steady job, mm-hmm. which of course you're grateful for mm-hmm. that and all the, you know, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, this is your one precious life. And may I remind you and everybody listening, we're staring down the barrel at the end of a decade. The end of a decade. Yeah. So the last 10 years, and granted, I've I've known you for several of them and known what you have gone through in the last 10 years. These last 10 years from 2010 to the end of 2019, as we're having this conversation, have prepared you for what's to come in the next 10 years. The decade of your 50s. Mm-hmm. 
You have what it takes. You are ready. The universe is handing it over to you on a silver platter. (laughs) And for you, Tracy, who, by the way, everyone listening, Tracy got chosen by (laughs) Elizabeth fucking Gilbert (laughs) to have your essay in her book, Eat, Pray, Love Made Me Do It. Am I right? You are right. Yes. (laughs) So all evidence points to that this is this is what you were made to do even someone who knows you the most your spouse saying yeah this is something i that i see you doing even you said people at work right have also said the same thing yeah obviously with a capital o <laughs> <laughs> this is what you were meant to do and okay now i'm sweating <laughs> All right. I think I'm sweating too, I, but for a totally different reason. <laughs> I paused to tell Tracy that I had to move my mic because I needed to stand up and like watch out now. I need to stand up and all because I stand up a lot of times when I'm actually working with clients because I and I put my hair in a ponytail and you know like shit's about to get real and and I say that because I see this all the time and I know so many of you are listening and maybe it's not something that you want to change careers. Maybe it's something that you, you know, when we had Karina on last month talking about she just wanted more time for self-care. It's somebody who, whatever it is, y'all, there are no guarantees that we're going to make it to our next birthday, that we're going to make it into the next decade. It breaks my heart and it should break yours that you aren't at least taking baby steps in the direction that you want to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. And I, and I don't want to run around in circles here. So let's discuss solution because you had said in your application that you had gone to the powers that be at your work and said, hey, here, like, tell us about that. And, and you also said, and nothing's changed. So talk to us about that. Yeah. So at the beginning of 2019, I decided to like take a proactive approach and I did go to some powers that be and I said, okay, I would really love to get involved in this and this and this. And I did, I made it sound very official. And I said, I was working with a career coach, which I just probably had you in the back of my mind. Just me, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you served as career coach at some point. Sure. Um, and it was kind of like, oh, that's great. Let's do it. And then I realized um, at the end of August or early September that I thought, you know what? Nothing really has come of that. Um, and so now it's clear to me I need to be in the driver's seat and I need to make something happen. But I, you know, I, I tried to be proactive and and have open lines of communication. And, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it, when you work for a company, they have their own deliverables, budget, et cetera. Right. Okay. So wait, I'm going to stop right there because you said it is what it is. My question is, how many times did you follow up with them about it? So after January, I probably, I probably didn't. I didn't because we got okay. busy doing other things and, yeah. Sure. Like, and like, may I remind you that they kind of don't care. Well, that, like, that's just it. Not, I know. It's not their priority. Exactly. Like if everyone's doing their job, if they're reaching their bottom mm-hmm. line, that's really, that's their job. That's all they yes. care about. Your value of freedom, they're not on their <laughs> priority list. So here's your assignment. I have, I have several assignments okay. for you. Some of them are like practical and logistical, and some of them are going to be a little bit more fun and airy-fairy and creative. But I... And, and of course, we co-create this. I don't mean to be so bossy, but my suggestion is that you revisit this with them like next week and say, hey, I know we talked about this in January. You you know them the best. So I don't – if it were me, I might say like, I, I apologize for dropping the ball on this. Like give them a proposal and say, starting on December 1st or January 1st, here's how I see my Mondays looking or – this kind of meeting that I want to do or this, like whatever, like be specific about what you're wanting to create and put dates and deadlines on it. Okay. I can do that. And tell them, you know, that you're happy to be in charge of it. Like what else you need to ask yourself, what else needs to happen in order to make it happen? So do you need to ask for more help on another part of your job that you're going to try to 
that will open up more time for you? Are you going, is it going to require you to work a little bit of overtime? Like what exactly is it going to look like? What obstacles do you perceive happening? Like, I know that you're good at this. Like give it to them. Like look at every single angle and like your life depends on it because it kind of does. I can do that. If it helps, you might look at it as if, okay, so say they gave me a $20,000 a year raise to do this. How would I show up? And they might. You could ask for that too. That would be nice. (laughs) And I guess the question becomes, if your life depended on it, I'm listening to for the hundredth time, Jen Sincero's uh, you are a badass at making money. And there's so many, I mean, even that doesn't even have to do with money. There's so many great nuggets that she has in there. And one of them is you make it known to the universe that you're unavailable for anything else. So you're only available for this project. And maybe it's not just at work. Maybe it's at home too. And we can get into that. But it's, you're making a declaration that this decade, 2020, the year Tracy's turning 50, is the year that you are only available to make this a priority, that you are only available to be selfish about this. I like that. Good. And I think it goes without saying, y'all listening, like it's not that you're going to neglect your children and be like, oh, college essays, you figure that out on your own. I'm only doing, you know, it's not, (laughs) you're still going to be Tracy, mom, wife, dog, mom, et cetera. But I think you get, you get the gist, right? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. What are you what what are you thinking, feeling, doing over there? I was writing, so I I'm taking notes, but then I just when you said, is there someone that could help you or shift some of your priorities? I just wrote down um, a name of somebody that could pick up some of what I'm doing to free up my time to focus on other things. So I wrote down a name. What if exactly? So that's what I, that's how I want you to that's the perspective I want you to take on this. So it's not just some like, well maybe maybe it'll work out. No, act as if the powers that be at your work said, "Hey Tracy, we need you to put 10 hours a week on this. Rearrange whatever you have to rearrange in order for you to make this happen." Perfect. That's the perspective I want you to have and make it a no-brainer for the people who are making decisions. Because at the end of the day, all they care about is that people are doing their job, people are mostly happy. (laughs) So how can you make that happen? And I like- It's just sort of the politics of work. Yes. And it is, this is good because if you're going to work for a, a corporation, you do have to adhere to the- politics of work. And that's just, you know, Mm -hmm. that's a reality, but I like this and we're, this is only, um, homework assignment number one, but I feel like this is getting me out of all this stuff swirling around in my head. And now I'm actually getting it out there and I'm going to start doing things. Right. Yeah. Because I think what like to kind of take a few steps back and look at this as a meta view. I, I I'm making up what what's happening in your mind over there, is that you're looking at this as black or white. Either you stay in this job and feel handcuffed, or you leave it all behind and run off and have like this love affair with this creative endeavor. Leave your salary behind, and then your husband's going to be like scratching his head, like what? Like it doesn't need to look like that. It's not one or the right. other. Right. And you, I do think of it as one or the other, especially since I ultimately see like my, my dream situation being, you know, uh, Tracy incorporated, right? (laughs) But it can be a meld of somewhere in between, or it could be, you know, steps forward while I work towards getting to that, right? I 100% don't want you to let go of that dream, the Tracy Incorporated. That's the long game, but I don't want you to put a deadline of, you know, January 1st, 2020 on that. Right. Because that would, that is not realistic. And frankly, all that would do is just um, discourage me. So that doesn't mean I can't get there, but um, there's things I can do in the meantime. 
There is. And I and I I I wouldn't necessarily say that it's unrealistic. Like a deadline of January 1st, 2020, a little. But December 31st, 2020, not totally unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Like give yourself a year. Like if you keep going and keep the fire lit under your ass and in your heart about the why, and your why is freedom. Your why is because I don't see myself doing this forever. Your why is I want my daughters to see that I followed my dreams. Yeah. And for as much as I'm focused on the fact that it's bad timing for me to do this, you know, while I have a college expense coming up, I could flip this around and think of it as if I do it the right way, like it could be a really great time to show an example to my daughters of, you know, finding something that you love uh, when you go to college, find something that you just can't get enough of. And that's where your career is going to take you. Exactly. Yeah. And you never know, like this could be, this could turn into a rev, a revenue stream that you didn't even know was coming that will end up paying for college. You just never know. Right. That could happen. The other thing, sort of switching gears, the other thing, I, I don't want to get off the phone with you without co-creating an assignment around it, is this whole elephant in the room, if you will, that this is the end of a decade. And what do you want to do creatively that celebrates that and looks at how far you have come over the last 10 years, as well as what are you declaring for the next decade for you? What do you want your 50s to look like? That's good. That's good. I, I'd have to, I have to think about that because I have been for sure. I, in the back of my mind, I mean, like my husband asked me, he turned 50 as well this year. And I gave him, I threw him a fun party and he's like, Oh, so am I going to throw you a fun party? So I'm like, Oh, I'm sure. But then in the back of my mind, I've, I've started to think about what my life was when I was turning 40 and then everything mm -hmm. that's gone on. And I, that I have been thinking about that. So I, I need to, I need to spend some time with that. What if you I this I don't know if you're going to think this is fun or not. But what if you did some kind of like time capsule where you wrote a letter to yourself to be opened in November or December 2029 or January 2030, whatever, and buried it in your backyard. Don't forget about it though in case you move. <laughs> And or put it in your safe deposit box or like sealed envelope. I don't know, but where you write yourself a letter and you say, "Here's what I want for the next ten years," or or even you could make a vision board that encompasses what you want to have, what you want to be, what you want to do, how you want to show up for the next ten years. I like that. I like that a lot. Which um, one? I like, well, so my first inclination is always to go to writing because I'm just, I'm not a super creative, crafty person, <laughs> but, okay, but, I, <laughs> but um, I do like the idea and I do say, I'm saying that in air quotes, idea of vision board. I like the idea of it. I really do. Do you write um, fiction at all? Do you like doing that? Um, I never have. I, well, I just, it just, I just thought... What if you wrote a story that is based on you? Like there's a female character and it's you, but it's not you. But it's sort of like a fictional story about a woman who happens to be turning 50 in 2020 and her name is Tanya or something. You know? <laughs> and she, you know, and she goes through the next decade and what happens to her and have fun with it. I don't know. Just a suggestion. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I should I should totally try that. And um, when I was little, I wanted to change my name to Courtney because I thought that was the greatest name ever. So I should I should name name her Courtney. Oh my gosh! Resurrect Courtney, forty nine year old Courtney, <laughs> and she's getting ready to embark on the decade yeah. of her life. Yeah. What does it look okay. like? Oh, that that I love that for you. I mean, of course you have to love it. <laughs> it's not I'm, just, I'm laughing right now, so that's not a bad thing. Like I, it's hysterical. That's a great thing. Yeah, I want you to have fun with it. I don't want it to be something that feels heavy or something on your to do list where you're like, "Ugh, Andrea wants me to do this thing." 
I'm, I'm glad that it's fun. So sit with it for a little while. Why don't I circle back with you in a couple of weeks and you can just tell me where you're at. I don't expect you to have anything, any major decisions, but do you feel a couple of weeks is enough time for you to take action on both the work thing, the logistics over there, as well as the creative assignments? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling now? What's going on? I feel um, I feel really happy. Like I'm sitting here, like with a huge smile on my face, because I really want to kind of start to flush some of this out. Because um, like it's just swirling in my head, but there these are things that I can pull out and start to do something with. And I and both the um, how can I make you know work better and start to transition a little bit? But also, you know, what spending some time thinking about what's the past ten years have been like and what's to come um, for the next ten years. And it's and I've always it's always been this way for me because I turn I've always turned a significant birthday at the beginning of a decade. So you know I've in some ways spent some time thinking about, well, what do I want this next decade to look like? And, and I really want to spend some time doing that for sure. So it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And I just want to, just a quick circle back to remind you regarding your, the company you work for is the really great news is that they said yes, when you talk to them about this in January. So you have that on your side. Not everybody does. And I, for people listening, I don't incur, I, I, I encourage you not to quit if quit badgering people and coming up with ideas to make some shifts in your, your current job to be able to do a little bit more of what you love. Tracy, thank you so much for being open and honest and vulnerable with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And so stay tuned, everybody. I'm going to be right back with an update. Whew. Okay. So there it was. Obviously, you heard me get all fired up. <laughs> I'm not tolerating people not living their best life, the women in this community not living their best life. So here's what happened. A couple of weeks went by, and I emailed Tracy on a Monday, as I told her I would, and I didn't hear back from her. And I was a little suspicious. I'm like, is she avoiding me? Because it's not unlike her to not email me back. And she also knew that I was going to be checking up on her because I was going to be needing to tell all of you, what's the update? What's going on? And I didn't hear from her. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, she's got two daughters and just life got busy. So that's when I reached out to her on Voxer two days later on Wednesday. And I'm just going to play this message for you so you can hear where Tracy is at. Hello. Happy Wednesday. After we hung up, a couple of things happened. It was interesting. I did go back and talk to some folks at work. And it's funny because it's just a lesson that sometimes the person that can be your advocate and your supporter might not always necessarily be your direct line manager because maybe a lot of times their hands are tied or whatever. But I was able to reach out to some other colleagues And so my 2020 is potentially looking really good in the sense that I, as of right now, I'm doing a lot more stuff that's in Tracy's wheelhouse. So I'm not quitting my job tomorrow and starting my own business, but I am moving in a direction that's going to align me with that and doing things that, again, are more my passion, my sphere of excellence and sphere of genius, um, which makes me really happy. And if that all comes to fruition, I maybe can see myself staying there a little bit longer, um, which I'd be fine with as I have my little side plan of building up some reserves, padding the college fund account and all that fun stuff. So I'm not feeling like this urge to just run out and quit my job tomorrow. So I'm, I'm I'm trying to stay really hopeful that all of that comes together, which it looks like it is. Starting with a uh, class I'm going to in December, I'm getting certified in a new class. I popped online and applied for a DBA. Um, and then I popped on GoDaddy and I claimed I bought a URL with um, potentially what I could possibly be calling my new business. 
So I just did those two things. Those are things that cost me 79 bucks and then maybe 10 bucks for the URL. And I can have that forever, you know, whether I start my business now or I lead up to that. Um, so I did that. So those two things right there have made me feel a lot better. Now I'm just going to try to stay positive because I, there's a plan in place. And if the plan comes together, it'll be good. And then on a side note, also what ended up what's happened is because my daughter is a junior. So like college visits are starting. And so we started that whole process. And now that we have an idea of where she would be applying and kind of stuff like that. Um, I, the numbers is not this crazy thing that was in my head. I've actually done some research about what we're looking at for my daughter for school. And so that's helped too, because when you think of, oh my God, I got to send my kid to college. I mean, yes, we've been saving and yes, she has a college fund and all that stuff, but it's still overwhelming. So that's come together a little bit more in the sense that I actually have some numbers to work with instead of like, oh my God, I'm going to be working till I'm 75. (laughs) So I think all of that together has really brought my anxiety levels down considerably. And of course, talking to you, the fabulous Andrea was awesome too. Thank you again. That was really fun. I hope I didn't sound like a spaz. Okay. (laughs) Bye. And no, Tracy, you did not sound like a spaz. You're just a regular woman who's wanting to live her best life. And we are so excited to hear that she took the steps. She did what she said she was going to do, and she's doing it. It re- And when I say steps, it really sometimes is just about these baby steps. Sometimes baby steps are too big, so we take turtle steps. And it is all about following up. And then look at what ended up happening. Oh, my gosh. So, of course, in my next question to her, I asked her, okay, when is this happening? (laughs) I need more details. And that's really the beauty of coaching. And it is about that accountability because who knows how much longer would have gone by where she didn't follow up and check with somebody to make this happen. Like I said before, no one really cares (laughs) except her. You are the one that needs to make it happen. You are the one that needs to take action, ask the questions, try to find the right people to help you. Research, research, research. What is it that's going to get me to that next step, to that next place? So as I said before, I really hope that you enjoyed this and that it keeps you inspired and motivated to take the next step in your life to really even, if nothing else, think about what it is that you want either for the rest of this year or into the new decade. Next week, I'm going to be talking to you more about that. Holy shit, we are walking into a new decade. So look for that episode. I'm going to be talking to you about wrapping up not just the year, but the decade and how do we want to honor that. And there's going to be a journaling worksheet Super excited for that. So I will see you then. And until next time, ask kickers, I will see you all out in cyberspace. Bye-bye. 